Let's go ahead and get to T. Scott Jones, nice enough to join us. When you need legal expertise, that's the man. But first of all, buddy, it's game week. I tell you what, I mean, you know, we've got some <laughs> moccasins to whip up on. You know, they're going to make the trek up 75, and hopefully they go back uh, dejected and disappointed and, you know, I guess feeling good about a second-place uh, performance. <laughs> that's right. And um, I think we're going to see uh, Nico put up some numbers that Iowa didn't want to get embarrassed by in the bowl game. So uh, I wanted to have you on to talk about Faison Brandon and this lawsuit against North Carolina. He's one of Tennessee's top commitment is the top commitment for the 2026 class. And I'm curious, just initially, what are your thoughts on this lawsuit? You know, I actually think it's uh, pretty well thought out and based by the young man and his attorneys. You know, when you looked at what North Carolina did as far as directing the folks to come up with NIL rules, they didn't come up with a thing to ban NIL. That wasn't the intent. It was sort of to put some, for lack of a better term, uh, fencing in place so that we kind of understood, you know, what the parameters were. We sort of had talked about that earlier with the lawsuit that we had with basically uh, the various conferences and the NCAA in which, you know, had they taken it slow, had they not tried to outright ban it, there wouldn't have been that type of situation. But uh, it, it appears to be a well-placed lawsuit. And certainly given the climate that we're currently in, I think it's uh, basically uh, likely to be successful. Interesting, Caleb. T. Scott Jones, uh, great to see you. And one of the, thank you. One of the things that, because I, I went on a soapbox yesterday about this, because I don't think this is just North Carolina. I think this is across the country. You know, I think it bothers me because some states do have laws just flat out banning you from making NIL money while you're playing high school. I just want to go on principle on a fact of how is it okay to say a kid can go work at McDonald's or Baskin Robbins when they're 16 to make money while they're in school, but they can't go make money off their exploits on the football field for their high school football team, wherever that may be. I mean, and, and uh, just in a, uh, Arkansas passed a law last year where you don't even need permission from the division of labor anymore for somebody under 16 to get a job yet. You can say that they can't make money off NIL in high school. Yeah. It kind of flies in the face of common sense. I mean, you know, harkening all the way back, let's go to sort of an extreme sport. I mean, you think they could have said Tony Hawk couldn't have made money riding a skateboard. I mean, the reality of it is, if you have a particular talent, I mean, it's only there for a finite period of time. So you've got to exploit it while it's there. And if there are folks willing to compensate you for your name, image, and likeness, I mean, are we going to say then, uh, I mean, these other entertainers and folks, just because of their minority, i.e. being underage, that they cannot uh, proceed and make money. I, I think when you look at the directive from the Board of Education, I did look a little bit into this lawsuit. I think, you know, an outright ban was uh, exceeding what was intended associated with it. And, I, you know, it, it's kind of that new reality that we're living in. We talked about it early on, and I know on a couple of uh, broadcasts that I've been on, we've talked about it's kind of the wild, wild west in that we're kind of making rules as we go because, you know, it is all new and it's certainly new when we're dealing with athletes that are by their definition under the age of 18. I'm going to ask you this question and um, I, I'm going to phrase it because the thing that's special about Banks and Jones and T. Scott Jones is that he goes to trial. Tennessee's trial attorney, other lawyers will settle, not T. Scott Jones, Banks and Jones. So does this settle or does this actually get to court, in your opinion? You know, I think preliminarily it will get to court, uh, i.e. I, I think the position is so strong for the plaintiff and the young man uh, that I, I don't think there's a lot of settling that's going to happen. There's probably going to be a capitulation and or a compromise with some sort of rules and or a we're going to enjoin this action at this point in time as far as a total ban of NIL. But we're going to go back to the drawing board and it's kind of like, come back and, you know, uh, see us again. But at least at this uh, point in stage, you know, if I was representing the young man, I'd sort of be hell bent for leather on this. I mean, uh, you know, is, I, but, I would not. Wait a second. I mean, wait a second. I don't know what that saying means, but I've officially loved it. Okay. Oh, what, okay. what does hell bent for leather mean? 
Well, you know what I mean. By God, you you are you're you're got the <laughs> the uh, reins in your hand, and you are flat. You you are you're at full gallop. I mean, you're going to do what you need to do. And so, I mean, you know, it's kind of an old Southern expression. I mean, you know, one of those things. I mean, I like you're going to get it done. Yep. Hopefully, it's going to be like Nico with that ball and throwing it down the field. He's <laughs> going to have the pig skin and he's going to be launching it and we're going to be catching it. Oh, Brew's going to jump up there, do his thing. And then the rest of that wide receiver core, it is going to be an amazing aerial spectacular. Yep. I think so. Caleb? Uh, so T Scott Jones, you know, it's funny. I was, uh, walking, I was talking to my wife yesterday about this lawsuit because I was just going on a, um, rant about how it's unfair that high school kids can't make money off their talents. And she brought up a point that I didn't think about, which is that, you know, you, it's funny. We talked about child entertainers. There are laws in place to make sure that parents can't steal their kids' monies, their kids' money as child stars. And Faison Brandon's mom is, have to see. go ahead. Sorry? I'm sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, Faison on Brandon's mom is filing the lawsuit. I'm not casting any aspersions on her. I don't know her. I'm sure she's just looking out for her son. However, if as as much as I'm for it, do you think this lawsuit will allow guardrails to be put in place to make sure parents can't steal their kids' NIL value when they're minors? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, back in the day in Alabama, those planes flew over and dropped uh, hay bales in uh, the fields and they might have had money in them. I mean, at least that's what I was always told. But, you know, I don't know who got it. I think the parent got it as opposed to the uh, athlete. I mean, no cast dispersions on our friends from the South. But that being said, you know, when we're talking about this situation, yeah, I think there's going to have to be some protections put in place. There's going to have to be I mean, I think it would be reasonable to set up rules, trusts, things of that nature, so that those funds are held in trust for the uh, benefit of the child. I mean, you know, what's the next step? Uh, you know, we, we're, we're looking at kids that are playing middle school ball and things of that nature, getting interest from D1 programs. I mean, it's just a reality. I mean, I mean you know, whether it's their parents marketing them on social media and things of that nature, you know, it is uh, something that, you know, is going to have to be dealt with because the amount of money, we're no longer talking, you know, uh, small change. I mean, you know, we look at some of these NIL deals and I mean, you know, uh, God bless the University of Tennessee volunteers and our supporters, but read the article today with regards to uh, basically uh, Nico. I mean, $8 million. Kudos for Nico. He seems to have handled it well, but I mean, Eight million dollars by anybody's measure is a significant amount of money. And so when we start seeing high school athletes, I'll say high school athletes getting a quarter million dollars. I mean, most gainfully employed individuals don't make anywhere close to a quarter million dollars. So, you know, that's got to be preserved. I mean, you know, it's one of those where money's here today and gone tomorrow. I mean, you know, it's kind of sad. I mean, we watch those ESPN 30 for 30s, you know, after the applause. I mean, it's it's really sad to see these incredible athletes and talents and get taken advantage of financially. I mean, our own Knoxville world boxing champion, Big John Tate, oh, yeah. for all intents and purposes, died destitute. And I mean, we're talking the champion of the world. And it's just sad. I mean, there's got to be something done. That's I hadn't heard that name in a long time, but I've a personal tie for him and uh, to him and it was uh it was it was, heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking at the end of it uh t scott you go to trial i know uh that that's not the case with a lot of lawyers because i've had lawyers tell me um i lose money if i go to trial um they want is I, really that's been said and he's a good friend of mine so i don't want to out him uh but he's not in this city um so uh if, if you could tell me what makes banks and jones different from other personal injury and criminal defense attorneys. Well, can I quote Ricky Bobby? You know, in the morning when I get up, no, I'll leave that alone. <laughs> oh, I love now, that. I mean, reality of it is, you know, I always tell folks, you know, I've had my tail whipped and sometimes I look at the other folks on the other side and the question is, have you had yours? If you're not in trial on a day in, day out basis, we make on average 41 court appearances a week then honest to God, you lose your trial skills. I mean, you lose, hey, should I object to that? Should this actually be admissible? You know, how should I prove things? And as a result, we get 
a, a lot better results for our clients uh, across the board. I mean, we're very, very blessed with the success we've had. We don't take anything for granted, but, you know, uh, it's one of those things, you know, uh, basically, uh, and, and I will quote, I believe Payne Stewart said it at one point in time, you know, the harder I work, the luckier I get. So yeah, there's no substitute for hard work and there's no substitute for honest to God. I mean, you've just got to bring the hammer sometimes. Amen. You got a prediction for the game on Saturday? Uh, you know what? I, I, I am thinking that we're going to uh, see Nico removed after the second quarter. I mean, uh, no, I mean, I'd like to see that. I mean, see some of the other talent that we've got out there. But uh, I, I think we're looking at, at an incredible score. I think we're looking somewhere around 70 to three. So I, I think it will be a shellacking. I tend to. Back, that was the 2000 Louisiana Monroe score. The only time Tennessee crossed 70 at Neyland Stadium. That's right. I was there. Fan, oh, historical there. You know, I'm sitting there. Oh, this I guy, this guy blow you away, counselor. I mean, <laughs> his history is uh, absolutely. Bizarre. Well, I'm just glad to see Caleb smile. You know, he sits there and he's kind of like, <laughs> I want to make Caleb smile. I'm like, I, you know, I'm, I'm literally going to start like bringing the ears and stuff in here and start. Well, he says, what you may not know is I'm. I'm randomly researching facts when you guys are talking sometimes, and that's when I come across uh, the score of 73. Now. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you're, you're, you're the repository of all knowledge, you know, uh, all things uh, there. So, you know, Lance just said 2003. Was that the, uh, was that the year of the, uh, the big shellacking? No, it's 2000. 2000. Was it 2000? 2000. Okay. I, will I will tell you this, the funniest thing, um, and then I'll let you go. And, and for, I want to tell you how much we appreciate your support uh, from Banks and Jones. Uh, it means the world. But I remember after that game, trying not to giggle in a press conference because um, Philip Fulmer was asked, they blocked two punts, if you all remember, in that game. And Philip Fulmer was asked, um, did they do a better job of defending uh, or protecting when they punted later in the game? He goes, Guys, we could have blocked it every time. Oh, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, well, great stuff, Scott. I appreciate it. Uh, anything else you would like to add? Uh, no, although I heard some comments that uh, uh, alluded that Tennessee was akin to Old Dominion, and uh, I strongly su uh, suspect that uh, I, 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 I think the worst team in the SEC uh, is better than the best team just about anywhere else. So proud of my volunteers, proud of the SEC and our new additions. And thank you, folks, for regarding Tennessee as the real UT. And now we've got Tex. So welcome, Tex. Hope you have a uh, long stay in the SEC. Amen. And everybody loves your suit, by the way. No, oh, well, thanks. thanks. He's got Jones, uh, ladies and gentlemen. See you, buddy. Uh, Banks and Jones, we love him. The show represented by Banks and Jones, Tennessee's trial attorney. Other attorneys, they don't want to go to trial. They want to settle. That's easier.